good morning. Let's go for a run. That felt so good. I've been dabbling in doing this regularly, starting my day with a run and then cold plunging and then getting some sun in and it's just like the best start to the day. I just feel so like good and energized and like vibrant and clear-headed. It's amazing. I never thought two of the things that I hated the most, <laughs> cardio and cold, could make me love the other one like literally i woke up this morning and like i didn't really want to run but the idea of like running and then cold plunging and getting to lay in the sun ooh, that's motivating to get out of bed which is wild and once i have gotten the appropriate amount of vitamin d based off of the current uv where i am right now i'm gonna go make a delicious nutritious breakfast and i'll probably feel even better oh speaking of food things i am gonna show you what i eat today have a little kombucha, the best flavor ever. Brew Doctor just came out with cherry limeade and oh my God, if you're not a kombucha girly, try this and you will become a kombucha girly. So as I am doing my own wellness challenge, 35 Thrive, which you can sign up for at 35thrive.com, I am eating only whole unprocessed foods for these 35 days. And I like to look at challenges like these as a way to get creative in the kitchen and try new things. I have this recipe on Pinterest that I just saved forever ago and I wanted to recreate it, but I also didn't want to put in all the effort to make all the little things. So I kind of just did the basics of it. So I basically ended up with a quinoa, sun-dried tomato, egg avocado, greens bowl with some honey goat cheese and I did not think it would turn out looking this gourmet but it looks gourmet AF if I may say so myself and I'm very excited to eat it but I want to take some time in today's video to talk about whole unprocessed foods and what that means because there's so many different definitions that people have, but there is no one exact specific definition. So it's just kind of what I want to focus in on today. I'll show you a my full day of eating only whole and processed foods, and trust me, it's still going to be a very fun day of eating. Not to spoil it, but first of all, this breakfast is freaking phenomenal. I know it does look kind of boring if you're like not into like healthy foods, but the sun-dried tomato pesto that I put on here just, oh my god. That's one of my pro tips, by the way. If you hate eating healthy because it tastes boring or just doesn't taste good, like find flavorful things to add. And I talked about this like one or two videos ago where I added a Moroccan soup to the lamb that I was cooking. I didn't make a lamb soup. I just used it as like a flavoring and it just adds so much flavor and deliciousness. And so with this, the sun-dried tomato pesto is just crushing it. But anyway, as I was saying, there's a lot of different definitions of what whole unprocessed food means. And I think the correct definition is just gonna depend on what you're looking to get out of the definition. So for me personally, my main goals with my health and fitness journey and honestly in life in general is just longevity and health span, slowing down the aging process, getting as much life out of my life as I can and using a healthy lifestyle to help me achieve that. And so when I define whole unprocessed foods, I'm looking at it through that lens, if that makes sense. So I wanna sit down and share my thoughts with you guys on that. But first, I'm gonna finish this because all I wanna do is just shove this in my face because it tastes so good. Oh, I was in the process of telling you guys what I'm gonna eat later that's also gonna be amazing and delicious. Should I spoil it or should I just make you watch the video? You know what? No, you gotta watch the video, but trust me, dinner, you're gonna love it. Like, I don't think there's a single person that would not love the amazing, delicious dinner that I'm gonna make that's only whole and processed foods. And I'm also gonna have dessert later today because why not? Anyway, like I said, I just want to shove this in my face, so I'm going to stop filming so that I can just eat, and then we'll circle back. Speaking of wanting to live longer and stay healthier for longer, my roommate actually asked me the other day, she was like, Marissa, 
how do I stop aging so fast? And to be honest, she really just said it to me in more of like an offhand way, but I was like, you have come to the right place. You were asking the right girl. <laughs> My first steps for pretty much anyone are gonna be like, get the basics down. Like, eat a diet that's not gonna be inflammatory. Cut out alcohol, reduce sugar, make sure you're exercising regularly, getting enough sleep, managing your stress. Aging all really comes down to stress on the body, not just like emotional stress, but also environmental, chemical, dietary stress. Because all these different stressors have the effect on the body of turning healthy cells slowly into something called senescent cells, named such because because senescence is just the process of growing old, but the creation of these cells in the body contributes to biological aging. So essentially enough stress on your body is going to start creating senescent cells and these cells stop functioning properly. They stop dividing, but they don't die off. And then on top of that, they start releasing different harmful substances that can affect cells around them and start causing those cells to become damaged as well. So it's not just the buildup of the individual senescent cells, it's the fact that the senescent cells also harm the other cells around them. So the more you can do to decrease the incidence of things in your life that are going to contribute to the creation of senescent cells, the slower you will age. So that's kind of like the foundational stuff of slowing the aging process. And then on that side of things, also in regards to not promoting development of senescent cells. You can also do things that are gonna enhance your body's resiliency to stress. So hormetic stressors essentially like exercise and sauna and cold plunge and fasting all kind of build your body's ability to tolerate the stress. But on the other side, you can also do things to decrease the number of senescent cells that are already in your body causing damage. And one of the best ways to do this is to incorporate senolytics, which are a class of substances discovered less than 10 years ago that are being hailed in the aging and longevity space as one of the biggest and best discoveries that can significantly contribute to a healthier aging process. Now there's a lot of natural dietary sources of some of the top senolytic ingredients but you would have to consume like an absurd amount of them to get like a clinically effective dose but Thankfully, Neurohacker has come out with Qualia Synolytic, which essentially takes all of the best synolytics, combines them with a couple other key ingredients that work synergistically with them in order to give you the effective dose to remove senescent cells from the body and allow the rest of your cells to thrive. So I have been taking this for months now and I love pairing it with my healthy lifestyle to target aging from both sides essentially, right? So my healthy lifestyle helps reduce the incidence of developing senescent cells and qualia synolytic helps remove the existing senescent cells. And I really love being able to target it from both sides because a lot of the symptoms caused by senescent cells such as achy and painful joints, slow workout recovery, more mental and physical fatigue, like those things make it harder to do the lifestyle stuff that helps with the aging process. And so they kind of go hand in hand, the lifestyle and the senolytic, so you can keep doing all the things that you need to do with your healthy lifestyle to slow the aging process. So big shout out to Neurohacker for sponsoring this video. I have been a huge fan of their products for quite some time now, mostly because they have some of the most like science-backed products on the market. Their formulas are fully transparent. There's no like proprietary ingredients where you don't really know what's in it. And they have hundreds of research citations. Like if you go on their website, you can individually look at all the different ingredients that they use and read a bunch of studies that show the efficacy and effects of the specific ingredient. So if you are interested in slowing your own aging process, making sure you can get as much life out of your life for the rest of your life as possible, I do highly recommend checking out Qualia Synolytic. You can go to neurohacker.com slash fit and nerdy for up to $100 off your order and then use the code fit nerdy to get an additional 15% off your order. I will leave a link down in the description box below. Check it out. I've been taking it every month for months now. You only have to take it two times a month also. It's not like something that you have to take every single day, which is really nice. I just have it on my calendar. When it pops up on my calendar, I take it and then I don't have to think about it. Anyway, go check it out. You won't regret it. You have nothing to lose, like literally, because they have a 100-day money-back guarantee. <laughs>
hydrate. I think obviously the discussion about processed foods, what they are, what they do to the body, etc., ties in very integrally into the discussion around longevity and health span. And like I said, particularly through the lens that I view processed foods, like I am looking at it as optimizing my diet for longevity. Because the thing is, pretty much every food that we consume is processed to some degree. And you'll see people on the internet making this argument like, oh, all foods are processed. You're chopping your broccoli. That's a processing your broccoli. I told myself I wasn't gonna get snarky. It's too late. But like, that is true, right? Like chopping your broccoli, grilling your steak, pureeing your fruit into a smoothie. All of this is some amount of Processing. So where do we draw the line at what really counts as a processed food or not? Because I think most people would agree that chopped up broccoli is not processed food in the context that most people are talking about processed food and certainly not in the context of when you're talking about food processing and longevity. There was recently a scale that was created called the Nova Scale by researchers at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil that attempts to categorize foods into four different categories going from like least processed to most processed. And I think this is a decent scale, good for research purposes, glad it exists. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily say that personally if I am eating only whole and processed foods that I am eating according to the Nova scale because there are certain things in group two that I probably wouldn't consume like seed oils or at least conventionally created seed oils, which may be the problem with seed oils in the first place. And I think that's the defining factor for me in my definition for my purposes of identifying a processed food is essentially the modernization of the processing of it because the more advanced our food processing technology has gotten, the more we've taken food away from being real food. So the way I personally define processed foods is anything that you could have made or eaten 200 plus years ago or anything you can make for yourself right now without some sort of like industrial machinery. So for example, flour. Humans have been making flour for centuries. I would count that as unprocessed as long as it is like 100% just like straight flour. On the other hand, things like artificial flavors. Those didn't exist 200 years ago. And I'm pretty sure I would need a lab to create them. So why do I define it this way? What What is that like dividing significance between the two food groups, processed and unprocessed? For me, it's based on nutrient density and how that food is going to affect the inside of my body. So first thing is minimally processed foods tend to be much more nutrient dense than hyper processed foods. It's not just the vitamin and mineral content that gets altered the more you process a food, it's also the fiber that gets taken out. Our fiber intake is hugely important for our gut microbiome which affects all of your health but not again just fiber and vitamins and minerals, all of the phenolics that are in plants as well. So these are things like phenolic acids, flavonoids, tannins, polyphenols, like all of those things from various plants individually can have such a profound health promoting effect on our body and you're just stripping them all away when you alter process of food. Like these phytochemicals are key in regulating our biochemistry, our gene expression, nutrient sensing systems, longevity pathways, and alter processed foods are going to be very low in these different chemicals that are really, really, really beneficial to our bodies. But not only are they gonna be low in all of the things that are super helpful, they're gonna be a high in a lot of things that are not so helpful, usually. Processed foods often contain ingredients that are known to promote inflammation. They also contain ingredients that can alter our gut bacteria in a not so positive way, and your gut is foundational to your health. They also have ingredients that can affect your immune system, your endocrine system. And there's numerous studies that show that processed foods are linked to higher levels of inflammation, cardiovascular disease, increased overall disease risk, 
risk and lowered life expectancy. So that's why I define processed foods the way that I do and that is why that is one of the requirements for 35 Thrive is to eat only whole and processed foods for the 35 days because not only is it going to affect your longevity but it's also going to affect all of the different mechanisms in your body in a positive way in the short term as well. It's not like you have to wait 80 years to feel the benefits. Within a couple weeks of getting rid of the foods that are depleting your body of its resources, causing inflammation, causing all sorts of issues, etc., you're gonna feel a huge change in your energy, in your hormones, in your immune system, in your workout recovery and workout performance, mental clarity, all sorts of things. So I'm curious about your guys' thoughts on this whole topic. I know it's a little bit sensitive for a lot of people, but I think it's important to talk about. Like our health is important to talk about. But yeah, if any of you have like similar definitions, but you disagree with a little bit of it, I'd be super curious because I'm happy to refine my definition. I definitely think there's some gaps in it when it comes to like optimizing diet for longevity. I wouldn't say that like my definition of unprocessed foods is if you only stick to that, you're gonna have the optimal diet for longevity. I think there's a lot more nuance in that. For dinner, I am making a burger salad and I am so excited about this. I currently have sweet potato cubes toasted in the oven. Gonna chop up some romaine and add in a little bit of bring mix just to get a little bit of the darker greens because I have some more micronutrients. And you can't have a burger without some onion. I don't know about you, but I'm a raw onion kind of girl. I ain't about this caramelized onion nonsense. Just kidding, if you like caramelized onion, you're fine. I just really like the crunch and the flavor, the raw onion. And then for the meat, I'm using the Force of Nature grass-fed beef ancestral blend because it also has beef liver and beef heart. So getting a good dose of my organ meats, but to add a little bit more burger flavor to it, I'm gonna toss in the cast iron pan. That's just a little bit of butter heating up with a little bit of onion, but also just gonna cook it with some ketchup and a little bit of barbecue sauce. Why barbecue? I don't know, because it was in my fridge and I had it. And I was thinking Thousand Island, but I don't have Thousand Island. So barbecue it is. So the sweet potato is in here, essentially to mimic the bun. Gonna do about half a pound of the meat and then you can't have a burger without cheese. And lastly, again, this could be Thousand Island, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use ketchup as a dressing. And here we have my exclusively whole and processed food burger salad. And of course, you can add your favorite burger toppings to this. Make it however you want. Dinner was amazing, and now it is dessert time. And this is where my definition of not processed foods deviates a, a smidge from optimizing eating for longevity. To be fair, there's actually not a lot of sugar in this. It's two tablespoons of maple syrup. How much sugar is that? I don't even know. Oh, that's 24 grams of sugar. Which is fine. Yeah, I just wouldn't want to have this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I've just had a little craving for a little mug cake. So I'm gonna make myself a chocolate mug cake. <laughs> so good. It's a little cake in a mug. I have made my fair share of mug cakes in my life and not once have I reused the same recipe. I just never, never pay attention, never bookmark it. I really should like actually save the recipes that I use. Like this one. This one turned out really good. I'm very happy about this. Oh, it's gonna be way too hot if I take a whole bite. For a gluten-free paleo mixed nut flour chocolate mug cake that took 75 seconds in the microwave to make, this is pretty freaking delicious. <laughs> it is now very late. I have been working very, very hard all day. Very, very hard the last 
two days. I mean, I normally work hard, but like harder than normal. I'm just working on lots of fun stuff for Holistic Fitness Labs. Speaking of which, mark your calendars, Fat Loss 101 coming back. Early bird registration will be April 29th and 30th, and then it will be fully live at full price on May 1st. So if you wanna get in for this round of Fat Loss 101, make sure you go to fatloss101.com to sign up for the wait list. Early bird registration will have a huge discount. And also, if you are part of 35 Thrive, pay attention to your um, email and or the Facebook group for a little special discount since you are already part of one of my Holistic Fitness Labs programs. And if you're not already in 35 Thrive, it's not too late to sign up to get the special 35 Thrive discount. I am so excited to be bringing it back. If you do have any questions about the course, as always, do let me know. Feel free to shoot me an email, leave a comment, etc. Happy to even set up a call with you and chat and see if it is right for you. Anyway, as I said, it is getting quite late. I am quite sleepy. Honestly, it's probably too late for me to be making this much tea, um, cause I'll probably have to wake up in the middle of the night to pee. Or I just won't finish the tea. It's fine. I'm just gonna drink. I'm definitely thirsty. I need a little something something. Anywho, this is gonna be the last of what I consume today. So I'm gonna sign off here because I can't keep my eyes open. I'm just gonna go shower and get ready for bed and get all this other stuff done that I need to get done and then promptly pass out. I hope you guys like this video. Please do go check out Neurohacker's Qualia Synolytic. Again, at neurohacker.com slash fit and nerdy. I'll leave a link down in the description box below. In the meantime, if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you want to see more content all about health and fitness and wellness, you can check it out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you're notified when I post a video and I will see you very soon. Bye.